So, hello everyone and welcome to this event in partnership with the Vilnius University Business School. My name is Stefania and I will be moderating this webinar on behalf of Toxicity. So, I see here that our first participants have joined us, so a warm welcome to all of you. We're just going to wait a few minutes, I promise, before we dive into our session to ensure that everyone has a chance to connect. In the meantime, don't hesitate to say hi or introduce yourself in the chat here on Zoom. And furthermore, we are curious to know where are you joining us from, so please take a moment to share your location in the chat. Thank you for, for being here and for being part of this event, we will start shortly. In the meantime, I wanted to inform you that we got a Q&A section lined up after the presentation. So this is your chance to ask your questions to our panelists. So don't be shy, go ahead and type your questions and curiosities in the Q&A box. We will be thrilled to answer them. And if you are interested in receiving the certificate of attendance issued by Doxity, stay tuned because we will give you more information after the session. So now, talking about the lineup. In today's webinar, we will explore the one-year intense MBA entrepreneurship and innovation program and hear success stories from alumni. So as you can see, I will not be alone. Here with me, there is a rich panel today. We have with us Jorgica, MBA Entrepreneurship and Innovation Study Program Director, Yossi, Innovation Ecosystem Promoter, and Greg, MBA former students now working as a freelance consultant in hospital revenue cycle management. So thank you for being part of this event and thank you to all of you. Without further ado, let's get started. So your Giza, the floor is yours. Jorgica, uh, just the microphone. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. As Stefania said, my name is Jorgita, and I'm very happy to be here uh, together with you and uh, uh, introduce the MBA Entrepreneurship and Innovation Study Program here at Vilnius University uh, Business School. And I'm very happy to hear that Stefania said that there are students joining from very different countries, from uh, Italy, from uh, Turkey, uh, from other countries as well. And um, it was very nice to hear this because we already had um, uh, a student who was studying in this program from uh, Italy. Uh, we also uh, have uh, Greg here with us, who is from the United States of America. Uh, we had students from China. Uh, we now have a student who already applied and got into the program who is from uh, South Africa. So this is very uh, international and uh, our Vilnius University Business School is all about internationalization, uh, which you will be able to hear from my uh, presentation. So let's go ahead and find out more about what this program is, um, what this program is about. Before I do that, I would like to let you know that Venice University Business School has a, an additional name. We'll call it a home of entrepreneurship because uh, uh, everything that we do or that we are about is all about entrepreneurial mindset and developing the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and we are very happy to, uh, to be um, accredited by various international international um, organizations and have international quality signs as the institution as well as our study programs. Just a little bit about uh, Vilnius University. So uh, we are in Vilnius, in the capital of Lithuania. Vilnius University is uh, uh, quite old. I uh, I would say it's 15, it was established in 1579. So it's the oldest, the largest, the number one universities in uh, Lithuania, uh, where um, uh, predominantly all of the students would like to study in our university. And it's among uh, around 400 in the world, uh, world university rankings. So, uh, Sorry about this. So we are very happy to be uh, of um, universities which are among top universities 
priorities uh, uh, in the world. And some other priorities that uh, Vilnius University has is interdisciplinarity, internationalization, high-level research, uh, strong community, and sustainability. Now about the Vilnius University Business School. Vilnius University Business School is a little bit younger than Vilnius University. It was established in 1989 and became a part of Vilnius University in 2016. Uh, it was established as the first business school in Lithuania. So we're very happy to be uh, the first ones and we're very happy that our business uh, studies are chosen by the students as uh, uh, number one uh, in Lithuania. Um, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we're very happy to be accredited by various international uh, organizations. As related to our priorities, it's entrepreneurship-based studies, internationalization and interdisciplinarity. Now that I told you about Vilnius University and Vilnius University Business School, let's talk more about the program. So the program is MBA Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Its length is one year. So it has two semesters. Uh, the subjects related to leadership, teaming, opportunity recognition and business development, anything that you need to know about finance and innovation strategy. During the second semester, during the spring semester, you study everything related to creativity design, prototyping and testing, commercialization, and anything that you might need to know about marketing and market development, knowledge intensive entrepreneurship, IP and law, and managing uh, growth. And I'm very happy because Yossi is here and he's teaching uh, managing growth. So he will be able to tell you more about that, as well as about the experiential innovation project. Students who come to this program, um, they have a very, very specific goal why they come here. So MBA program, this MBA program is not about general management. This program is all about uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial mindset and innovation. And usually we have two types uh, of students who come to our program. One type is students who bring something personal of their, of their own. Maybe they would like to have a business, a startup, develop their idea, and then bring it into reality. And another type of students, we have somebody coming from various organizations uh, who would like to innovate inside the organization, meaning intrapreneurs. And the Experiential Innovation Project um, takes place during the entire year from the start of the program until the end. Students come with their ideas or they find their ideas when they come to the program and they get the tools through all the subjects all the content that they are studying then they get uh, mentors and uh, i'm happy to say that yours is one of our mentors there are two mentors in the program and they're mentoring the students and uh, having um, pitches regularly uh, and this is how they develop their idea. This is how you can demonstrate uh, uh, to yourself that this is how you're progressing and making sure that you will get it into the uh, reality. Another point that we have in the program is practical international study visit um, abroad. So uh, all of the students go uh, abroad to a specific uh, uh, country. Um, some time ago, we went to Israel. This year, we're going to the Netherlands, Amsterdam, uh, Hague, Rotterdam. And we are exploring how uh, entrepreneurship and innovation works in that country's ecosystem. So students get uh, practical experience and practical uh, advice from various people, from entrepreneurs, from innovators, from um, who share experience so that students can really develop their uh, their own ideas. So this is the content, this is the structure. As I said, one year, no final thesis. Instead of the final master's research ah. thesis, uh, you are developing your own ideas through the experiential innovation uh, project. As I said, uh, in our program, we have a very international uh, community. So it's not only international students uh, who are studying in this program, we also have international or global faculty. So we have faculty from the United States of America, we have faculty from Canada, uh, we have faculty from Europe, France, Belgium, Spain, Denmark, uh, we have faculty from Israel, and of course we have faculty from Lithuania. And uh, all of the people who are teaching in this program, uh, they have 
practical experience, meaning that they already can come and share uh, with you uh, how it works in reality and give you specific um, advice. Uh, to move on, uh, the program is very flexible and very con convenient because we understand that students who are studying are very uh, busy uh, and they are from different countries. So this means that we really need to think about uh, our student and who is studying here. So as I said, this takes place during the entire year. Uh, we start in September and we start face to face with the first residential week, which is one intensive week from Monday until Friday from nine to four every day where students are studying specific um, lectures. The second residential week is in February, also in Lithuania. Uh, from Monday until Friday, very intensive week. And then uh, the third residential week is in, is in the foreign country where we go for the study visit. Everything in between is online, meaning that you can be anywhere in the world. You can be in your home country, you can be on business trips, you can be somewhere else. And you are joining on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the evening, 6 to 9. Uh, and then every other Friday from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m., this is the Vilnius time that I'm sharing with you. So this means that there are three times where you have to come and be here in person. This means that you don't have to leave your job. This means that you don't have to leave your family. So this is very flexible to accommodate the life that you, uh, that you uh, have. Some of the values of the program, as I said previously, this is all about entrepreneurial leadership, not general type leadership, but entrepreneurial leadership and uh, leadership competences, global experience through international community, action-based studies through experiential innovation project, um, European diploma, very empowering, empowering environment because you always meet with the MBA community, uh, alumni, uh, investors, uh, angels, uh, uh, and so on. So this is all practice-based, and this is all to make sure that we can develop your ideas and make them uh, the reality. To move on, uh, we're inviting you to uh, look into this a little bit deeper by going to our website and finding the information there. And this is one very important um, aspect to mention uh, because the applications have been open since last year, uh, September. Um, suggestion is for you to look into this and uh, remember that we have a special prize for this program uh, until April, April 1st. Uh, the regular price for this program is 12,000 euros, but until April 1st, if you're applying, so meaning we have an early bird uh, price, it's 10,000 uh, euros. And of course, specific scholarships apply when you are studying to develop your idea. Um, as related to the criteria for the students who will be applying to this program, uh, it's important to say that it's fully in English, so uh, English language skills are important. And then the students who are applying to this program, it's uh, important that you have at least three years of managerial experience uh, uh, because we already have students who usually come over here with some experience that they, they can bring and they can share with the other students. So you can see uh, information here, you can see my contact and you can visit our program uh, here and see a little bit more information on our um, uh, website. So this is what uh, is the MBA Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program about. And now I'd like to give uh, uh, the floor to Yossi so that he can share more experience about the project as well as the course that he's teaching. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Um, can you hear me, guys? Yes, perfectly. Okay, great. So hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I'm a serial entrepreneur and uh, I founded uh, 20 years ago a global consultancy firm focused on the promotion of and uh, promotion of entrepreneurship and innovation ecosystems. In the past uh, 15 years, I've led uh, technology acceleration programs around the world and I was the director of a leading university entrepreneurship center. Today, I'm the head of one of the leading rehabilitation centers in, uh, uh, well, head of innovation of one of the leading uh, rehabilitation centers in Israel. So as you can understand, I have a lot of experience in, in these fields. Um, I had the honor of taking part in many academic programs around the world. Uh, and uh, I have to say that this is one of the more practical and relevant for today's business world. Um, 
I'm really excited uh, to present to you one of the modules that I'm leading uh, together with uh, Professor Martinez. Uh, it's called the Exper Experiential uh, Innovation Pro uh, Project. Now, this model, model uh, gives you a great opportunity to enhance your entrepreneurial skills, to challenge yourself with real uh, life problem solving. And uh, we are doing all of that in uh, hands-on learning uh, by doing study experience. Uh, the, the module uh, begins with uh, each student coming up with their own startup idea. Uh, this is an initial phase uh, that serves as a foundation uh, for the comprehensive process that uh, takes you through all the crucial steps of the promotion of a startup, uh, from the ideation uh, to leading uh, a pitch in front of uh, first round investment uh, investors. So this is very, very practical. Now, in this model, we are uh, using uh, case studies, uh, group work, peer review, uh, site visits, and mentorship. So all of this uh, creates a very exciting learning experience uh, that, uh, you know, take you out of your comfort zone and give you an opportunity to fully understand what it means to take your idea step by step. Now, uh, this also allows you to learn how to create a market research formulate strategy like go to market and business models, uh, come up with a financial forecasting and R&D plans and, and one of the most important skills, the art of storytelling, which uh, you will have to use uh, while pitching your ideas uh, every two, three weeks. Now, the heart of this module, as I just mentioned, lies in a series of meetings where you, you, you are going to present uh, short piece, p pitches of, of uh, your ideas and uh, you will get some feedback. Now, the feedback allows you to refine your ideas and um, basically from one pitch to another, you improve, you learn how to pitch, but you also learn how to improve your idea. Now, um, another aspect of, of this model is the one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. Now, this guidance is, is really important because it ensures that the students receive tailored uh, support and insights that help you to understand each and every step. Now, uh, what sets this module apart is its ability to integrate diverse subjects that you learn uh, during this program, like marketing, strategy, and many other aspects. And it creates like a synergy between all of these topics. And this is a crucial thing. Uh, in conclusion, this model is not just a course, it's empower you to think, to collaborate, to innovate, and you're doing it in a real life situation. Uh, you really focus on real life problems, uh, global problems, and try to figure out how to deal with this aspect. So instead of uh, just conduct a market research on Italy, for example, if you come from Italy, you do it in a more of a global level because in startups, basically the world is your market and this is all the idea behind it. Now, this is a very important and interesting module that takes you through all the years that you are going to take part in this program. It's very practical, very interesting, uh, take you out of your comfort zone. You know, it's a really interesting experience. Um, this is in regards to this model. Now, another model that I uh, have uh, had the honor of leading uh, is uh, the Managing Rapid Growth and Virtual Teams. Now, this is a very important model because uh, today the world is a very global place. People move from one country to another and uh, when you come up with a business idea, it might become uh, what we call the rapid growth business. Um, and because of that, um, what we will try to teach you is how to build and manage virtual teams. Um, for example, if you are doing some sort of outsourcing from other countries, so how to, to work with these teams uh, from afar. Um, we will learn how to overcome course cultural differences uh, we will learn about globalization, and eco innovation ecosystem, what are the elements of the ecosystem, how they work together, what is the motivation behind each and every one of these elements, for example, how investor thinks, um, what type of uh, service providers we have, um, and, and many other aspects. So basically, you will learn all the insights and inputs that you should learn uh, before you start your career, if you want to become uh, more to, to lead a more entrepreneurial kind of career. And it doesn't really matter if you want to become an entrepreneur 
or work in a global organization, in all these cases, uh, you will see that the one the, 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 the employees that are more entrepreneurial, more innovative, they uh, become much more important and valuable to, to the organizations they're working. So basically this is it. And uh, as you can understand, uh, we bring a lot of experience and really want to give it to you guys. Uh, another important uh, thing in regards to both of these mo models and, and in regards to the program itself, it strengthens your, your social capital. And your social capital basically is, is your network and your network will become crucial for your future. And um, we, we, we're trying to present and, and uh, to bring people uh, uh, to meet the students, to talk with them, to drink coffee, to think together about ideas. This is really crucial to your uh, future uh, as a wonderful uh, businessman, the businesses, businessmen and entrepreneurs of the future. So this is basically, I, I hope that you are enjoying this uh, small presentation of the, about both of these models. Uh, they are really important, very practical, and I really hope to see you in the program next year. Thank you, Yossi. I think it would be great now to hear um, real uh, experience from our alumni, from Greg, who already went through this uh, program. And uh, I see that we got some questions. I already answered some in writing, but uh, after Greg's um, uh, after Greg's sharing his experience, uh, I will be happy to respond to some of the questions and go back to them uh, that were asked. Greg. Okay, good afternoon from Florida. I appreciate you guys taking some time today and having us. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm uh, from the United States, um, lived in Florida my whole life, um, worked in a big corporate environment after studying at the University of Florida. Um, back in 2019, I had the opportunity to actually travel to Lithuania to visit um, some family I had there and actually found out about this program. I think it was in its second year at the time, and so relatively new. Um, learned a lot about it and had it on my radar um, and then realized it would be a good opportunity for me, you know, as an American to, you know, travel to Lithuania and actually get some international experience, um, as well as being able to take part in this unique MBA program. Uh, most MBA programs are very corporate and you get a general lecture, you take a test on it. You know, there's not so much hands on, so to speak, experience. Um, so. So that was one thing that was appealing to me about the program. Also, the fact that it was only two semesters, 10 months, you can do it quickly. Um, that's what kind of led me to um, studying at Billings University in the MBA. Um, so a little bit of context from, from how I ended up there. Um, I'd highly recommend the program. Um, I actually had a, a great, despite being over there in COVID, I had a great experience. Um, I think the, the way the module system is set up, it's not a traditional lecture. You go to a normal class, you go to, you know, you listen to the lecture, you take a test, okay, move on to the next subject, next class. Here, it's a little more kind of hands-on, more dialogue. Um, as the previous speakers mentioned, um, most of the students coming in have experience. So you're not only learning from the teacher, you're learning from your fellow classmates as well. You know, I can speak to my experience. My classmate, Christina, can speak to her experience in Lithuania, and we're just hearing about different experiences in different countries and cultures in regards to business and entrepreneurship. So I think that's very beneficial and unique to the program as well. Um, so the experimental project that I chose, it was a during the time during COVID, um, we developed like a, a COVID-19 app. And so um, I, I'm not a technical person, but it was a great opportunity for me to push myself and get out of my comfort zone and learn about the technical side of building, you know, SaaS software subscriptions and um, regulatory issues. And um, I, I think the quality of the professors, you know, they're not just professors, they are actual entrepreneurs. Um, so they, you know, can look at your presentation ideas, critique it, give you insights, give you advice. Um, as they also mentioned, it gets you out of your comfort zone. It got me out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, you kind of like to normally play it safe, but when you have, you know, these experienced entrepreneurs from Europe, North America, all over the world, um, you know, kind of maybe 
positively critiquing your idea and giving you insights and advice, I think that's where you re really learn and grow and get out of your comfort zone. And that specifically happened to me coming from a strict corporate environment to having a more entrepreneurial mindset. Um, so that's like one of the things I really enjoyed about the um, expansion project um, as well. So a couple one things we want to touch on is maybe some of the challenges that one might face when, you know, traveling to a new country. I mean, this may be more of a challenge for me coming from the United States. I know we have students, you know, from France, Italy, Turkey, maybe it's a little more easier for you being that you're already, you know, in or close to the EU. Um, but I had a few little challenges with the, the banking system there. I was there on a visa. Um, I, I'm not sure in your circumstances, if you were to study in a foreign country, if you would encounter these same things that I did. Um, but I can tell you, I've actually been working with the university. We've had discussions and I'll actually be returning to Lithuania in the spring, summer. And um, we're looking to, you know, work on these pain points that international students face when coming to study in any program at Vilnius University um, and make it easier for them to, you know, arrive, assimilate, you know, and kind of hit the ground running. So, um, one thing I want to touch on is what did I learn? What did I gain the most from the program? And as the previous speakers, you know, alluded to, you really get that entrepreneurial mindset. Um, as I mentioned, I had a corporate background, very kind of strict, worked for a large company in the state of Florida, hospitals all over the state of Florida. Um, there wasn't much room for entrepreneurship. This is the way it's done. And, you know, you get it done. So um, I think it allowed me to, you know, kind of expand my creative thinking um, entrepreneurial mindset, um, complementing my experience, you know, learning from entrepreneurs and startups and early stage companies, um, hearing them do their pitches, hearing them critique your pitch. Um, I, I just think it's a truly unique program. If you if you have a new idea that you want to turn into a business or you want to start your own business in some capacity and something you already know, I think it's really going to give you the skills, um, experience, as well as contacts and the networking piece, which was touched on as well which is important. So, um, and the one thing I did not really know heading into Lithuania um, was how the entrepreneurship ecosystem within Vilnius as well as Lithuania was growing. Um, I, I didn't really have any idea that when I got there, I, you know, it was, it was pretty eye-opening to see the level of entrepreneurship and innovation that's happening in the country. Um, a lot of industries like FinTech, um, you know, cybersecurity, the, company there, NordVPN is the second billion dollar, you know, company valued in Lithuania. Um, so there's big things happening in the country of Lithuania and in Vilnius. And I think if you're studying this program, you're kind of getting access to that networking within that. And it kind of allows you to kind of get your foot in the door and learn in a really like emerging economy, I think not only in Europe, but the world. So I think that was one thing I wasn't expecting that's been a big benefit to me, um, having learned and um, work in and make connections in this growing um, economy in Europe. So, so that's kind of my my rundown and my experience. I um, really enjoy this program. I'm passionate about it. I wouldn't be here talking to you if I wasn't passionate about it and believing it. So I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Actually, Greg, um... I now see one of the questions that maybe you can even comment on as mm -hmm. a person who had to come to Vilnius and live here. There's one question from the person who asks, how is the cost of living in Vilnius? Could you talk about that a little sure. bit? Well, sure. Well, cost of living in Vilnius compared to South Florida is, is close to Miami is, is quite different. Um, it, it's cost of living isn't, it, from my perspective, being from the United States and South Florida, where, you know, cost of living is quite high. It's, um, Vilnius to me is cheap, but I, I think if you step back, I've traveled throughout Europe and I think compared to places in France, I know we have students from Italy. I've, I've spent four months kind of traveling through Italy. So I kind of have a little bit of understanding of cost of living and, you know, can compare the different countries. Um, I, I honestly think it's quite, a, quite affordable. Um, I, I don't think it's that bad, um, especially compelled to, compared to Western countries. It is going up because as we talked about earlier, the economy there is growing and things are starting to happen there, especially within the capital and, you know, international, you know, people from other countries are starting to move there and maybe that can drive the price of housing up. But 
if you're a student, I think cost of living is, it, it's not too bad there. It's very manageable, I think. And I, I think there's all, there's university has, you know, connections in the community for housing and um, there's a good support system there for, for things those you might encounter with, you know, trying to find a place to live at a reasonable price and stuff like that, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, and actually, it's the um, uh, relevant question because Paolo is asking uh, uh, if Vilnius University has dorms. So uh, answer is yes. Uh, we do have dorms uh, uh, that you can choose to live in. And then is it easy to find a house or I understand, is it easy to find an apartment? Uh, I would for rent, I understand. So I would say uh yes, but Greg, also your experience, you rented an apartment. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's pretty easy. Um I mean you could start off by maybe getting an Airbnb and then once you kind of get contacts, you kind of start to know people, you meet, you know, you build like a social network there, you'll hear about, oh, this person has a place in the old town, they they need want to rent it for a couple months or whatever. Um, I, I, so I was actually doing when I was in Lithuania, when I returned last summer, um, you know, there's all sorts of resources online, whether it's through social media, like Facebook, or, um, you'll be able to find something, you know, somewhere to stay easily. So, and if you're looking for something, you know, if you want to go there, maybe just for the fall semester, looking for a three or four month rental, I mean, that, that's not a problem to find people who are willing to do short term rentals like that as well. So if I can do it, you guys can do it, I think. Um, and then there's another question asking you if you have any plans to stay and live in, in Vilnius. Um, I, um, to some extent, yes, I, I kind of envision myself spending, you know, most of the year in Lithuania, but maybe during these cold winter months coming back home to Florida, um, for Christmas and, you know, you know, December, January, February, I'm not a cold person. I was there during the cold. It, it was a good experience for me and personal growth, but um, uh, yeah, I, I like it. It's a very welcoming country. It's, you know, the capital city, you're in a European capital, but you don't feel like you're in a European capital. It's not like Berlin or Rome or Paris. You, you get, you just get the vibe that's, um, that's a little more relaxed, smaller, very easy to navigate with the bus system or very walkable city, lots of green space and huge parks, you know, within walking distance from the old town, the city center. Um, so I, I did enjoy the country a lot and that's why I, I'd like to spend a majority of my time there coming up here in the future. So, yes. And then Joanne is asking if there are any type of extracurricular activities. Um, do we offer labs, uh, meeting with professionals, et cetera? Uh, did, did you engage in any extracurricular activities, Greg, while you were here in Vilnius? Um, during COVID, that was really difficult. But when I was, you know, after school was over and I was living in Vilnius, um, yes, it's very easy to find if you have a certain interest. Um, I mean, if you like basketball, you know, it's their national sport there. They love it. I enjoy basketball. So, you know, it was easy to find, you know, people who, you know, play sports and stuff like that. But um, uh, yes, I, I think it is. If you if you kind of dig and you know you'll you'll build your network and you hear the word of mouth and, and the university spot you know is associated with a lot of things there. So um, I think if the person's you know you really want to find these things to do, you know you'll be able to find them. And uh, some students who come over to Lithuania and study, um, uh, they also choose to work. Mm -hmm. um, remind me, Greg, did you work when you were studying? Uh, as well? No, because I was on a, no, it was, well, one, it was during COVID and it was, you know, it was kind of impossible to get a job. But I, when I was first there, I was on a visa. And I think with a visa, you're not, I don't think you're technically allowed, you know, to work. But I, I think if these are EU, if these students are from the EU or they have residents, you know, I, I think it may be easier for them to, you know, you know, find a job. And so um, I, I did not, but I know it's possible. And I met some other international students who were working there. So, um, and I think that's what the way the program is now. I mean, I think that's one of the benefits. I mean, your classes may not be live on campus, but if you decide to come to Lithuania for at least one of the semesters or two semesters, you know, then you can get a job and the university has connections within the, you know, certain ecosystems of the economy. Um, so perhaps it's possible to find, you know, a, a role for a semester or maybe the whole time. So not only are you studying, 
you know, in Lithuania, but you're also kind of living it and working it and kind of getting the full experience. So um, I definitely think that's possible. And I would actually encourage students, if you're thinking about this program, to actually move to Lithuania and get the international experience and, you, you know, get more connections, get more contacts. Um, so that would be my, yeah, mm -hmm. that would be what I recommend. I think it's certainly possible to, to work while you're there. So. Um, and we have some quite um, short questions, uh, such as, is the program fully in English? So the answer is yes. Everything is only in English. So uh, this is the answer to this question. Then we have another question related to the um, length of the program. Uh, yes, as I presented, it's only one year. So it starts in September and uh, finishes in uh, uh, June. In June, you already have um, uh, the defenses of your project ideas and then the graduation. Um, I, I did explain the structure when I was showing the presentation, uh, but uh, I had um, another question from somebody, if we are able to share the presentation, I would be happy to share the presentation. If Stefania uh, can let me know how to do that, I will be happy to share and you will be able to see the entire structure and um, and the semester subjects um, in, each, uh, uh, in each semester. Now, um, uh, as related to internships in big companies, uh, this program does not have a mandatory internship, but as Venus University Business School, we have very close relationships with uh, uh, specific organizations, uh, our strategic social partners, uh, such as, um, uh, for example, uh, um, Moody's, Western Union, NASDAQ, uh, Guidehouse, uh, entire Association of American Chamber of Commerce uh, with different companies. Uh, and uh, so we play the role of uh, uh, the matchmaker when we match the student with a specific company that the student might be interested in and see if there are some vacancies available for uh, working positions or maybe some internships. So we certainly can do, uh, can do that. Um, uh, Vilnius University, now I'm moving to the question in regards to English courses during the stay. Um, um, to begin with, uh, to be able to study in this program, I did answer one of the questions in, related to the requirements of this program. So the requirements include uh, motivation, to study, readiness to study the experience that you have, uh, at least three years of managerial exper experience, and uh, uh, English is important as well. Uh, you need to be able to communicate, you need to be able to do your assignments, you need to be able to pitch your uh, idea. So this is really important. Uh, uh, Vilnius University does offer English courses in our um, Faculty of Philology or Institute of Foreign Languages. You can certainly um, study uh, English language uh, there. They are paid for, but of course not so expensive as they would be if you were going to some private um, uh, lessons. Um, I also answered the, to somebody about the scholarships. There are um, scholarships available uh, for students to apply for during the um, uh, spring semester. Uh, there are uh, uh, possibilities for some of the students to substantiate the, um, their um, uh, entrepreneurial ideas and ask for a scholarship uh, where the finance received would be used uh, for the development of the um, uh, idea. And uh, the amount of the scholarship is two thousand uh, uh, euros that you can uh, that you can get. There are of course other scholarships at Vilnius University, uh, such as uh, for um, uh, high achievements, uh, for some uh, social uh, activities, uh, for um, uh, uh, participating in some activities related to Vilnius University Business School. Uh, so you can apply for them as well. But perhaps the largest one would be the ones that I mentioned during the spring uh, uh, semester. Um, 
Yes, for now moving, so I answered about the scholarship uh, related to uh, admission. Uh, in terms of admissions, are there any prerequisites such as the educational background? Uh, yes, you need to have a bachelor's degree. It doesn't matter what study field it is in, but you need to have a bachelor's degree to be able to study in our master's of business administration because this is a master's degree and you cannot study if you don't have a bachelor's degree. We still have one question uh, related to tutors, and I would like Yossi to respond to this question. The question sounds, do you have tutors to follow the students during the path? So we have mentors who do that, uh, who help with the ideas. So Yossi, maybe you can comment on that. Well, yes, uh, as I've mentioned uh, in my presentation, uh, basically uh, me and uh, Professor Martinez, uh, the mentors of uh, at the models that I just talked about. Um, it's pretty dynamic. You are the one to decide when you want the mentorship sessions to happen. And this is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session. Uh, in order to basically tailor made the uh, these uh, sessions to your needs and the challenges that you are facing uh, um, as students and uh, in regards to the specific uh, ideas that you're trying to promote. So uh, in case we don't know something or want to give you much more uh, data or uh, other uh, uh, tutors experience, uh, we, we have a lot of friends that uh, are in our uh, network and we can uh, give you the opportunity to, to meet them. Um, I do. I personally do it uh, all the time uh, with the students in this program. Uh, I'm leading uh, two very big mentor pools in Israel. Um, this, uh, this mentorship programs are focused on uh, mainly um, health, uh, health and medical technologies, uh, but we have a lot of partners and a lot of friends that could help you in very specific uh, questions like regulations and things like that. So yeah, uh, you have a lot of uh, experienced uh, mentors and tutors uh, in regards to these models and basically for the problem itself. Thank you, Yossi. Uh, we have another question related to international students. Um, as I mentioned during my presentation, Vilnius University Business School uh, priorities internationalization. So we are very happy to have students from different countries. In total, in our um, business school, for instance, this year uh, for admissions, 30%, uh, over 30%, 34% were international students. Um, as related to the entire number of students that we have, so a quarter of them are international students. Um, now, if we talk about the MBA program, uh, in each group we have international students. The numbers are not uh, um, very high at this point right now. For example, we have uh, three uh, international students, but MBA groups are uh, quite um, uh, small. Uh, we have uh, 11, 12, uh, up to 15 students. So uh, based on that, uh, international students might be, you know, three or, or around that number. Okay, so I think that we are done with the questions. So thanks again to our panelists to have joined us today and thanks to everyone that was here today to have been so curious and responsive with all your questions. So I hope you learned a lot and that this webinar helped you to discover more about Vilnius University. So if you're interested in receiving our certificate of attendance, you can click on the link that I sent in the chat. Okay, then you have it. So um, keep in mind that we will share the recording with you in the following days. Um, so keep an eye on your email. And uh, also, I would like to ask to our panelists if you want to leave a final message before say goodbye to our students. Um, yes, uh, certainly. So as Stefania said, there will be recording, so you will be able to see uh, what we presented and how we answered the questions. Uh, and you will be able to follow the link to the program to get more details about this. Uh, one thing uh, uh, that I would like to encourage you to do as international students to keep that deadline of April 1st where you can get a special prize for this program. And as mentioned, you can also later uh, apply for scholarships. 
So from the financial side, this is very uh, valuable. And good luck to all of you making the decision. Okay, so thank you so much to being here. And thanks again, everyone. I hope to see you again in the next webinar. It was a pleasure for me. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.